the Nobel Prize, founded by Alfred Nobel for those contributions to humanity. Nobel was the inventor of dynamite, by the way. What are the contributions to humanity that this year's winners have and are making? Is science and service to the Nobel ideal politics free? Join me, Jan Daras, for How We Got Here. At a time when the Kremlin rattles its nuclear saber and Nihon Hidankyo, a grassroots movement of atomic bomb survivors from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, has won the 2024 Nobel Peace Prize. Meanwhile, this year's prizes in the sciences had some Polish undertones. Uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics went to two researchers. John Hopfield, Princeton University, USA, and Jeffrey Hinton, University of Toronto, Canada, for foundational discoveries and inventions that enable machine learning with artificial neural networks. Professor Emeritus John J. Hopfield is the son of American physicist of Polish descent, John Joseph Hopfield, who was born Jan Józef Chmielewski in the Polish city of Płock, and physicist Helen Hopfield. Nobel Prize winners are usually universally praised for their scientific exploits. But Victor Ambrose, uh, who together with Gary Rufkin, won the 2024 Nobel Prize in Medicine on October 7th for the discovery of microRNA and its crucial role in how multicellular organisms grow and live, said it wouldn't have been possible if it had not been for his parents. Uh, I'm a son of an immigrant uh, from Poland. Ambrose's father came to the United States just after World War II and met his mother. They got married, moved to Vermont, took up farming, and had seven children. For chemistry, this year's award was split between David Baker and the duo of John Jupper and Brighton Demi Hassabis. Baker was recognized for his contributions to computational protein design. Thanks to an online game designed by Baker, a group of scientists has managed to decipher the structure of a retrovirus protein akin to that of HIV. This is a step toward designing more effective drugs for people with HIV AIDS. A group of researchers from the Department of Crystallography at the Adam Mickiewicz University, led by Professor Mariusz Jaskulski, is one of the key contributors to this research effort. And last but not least, the winner of this year's Nobel Prize in Literature, a South Korean-born Hong Kang, has spent several wintry months in Poland writing her third novel, The White Book, which was shortlisted for the 2018 International Booker Prize. Warsaw, the capital of Poland, resurfaces in her book a number of times. And although there were no polls among this year's Nobel laureates, Maria Skłodowska Curry's family remains unchallenged in the record for the most Nobel Prizes. Marie Curie herself received the Physics Prize in 1903 and the Chemistry Prize in 1911, and remains the only woman in history to win two. Poland's eight Nobel winners include former Polish President Lech Wałęsa, who received the Peace Prize in 1983, and the country's most recent laureate, Olga Tokarczuk, who received the 2018 Prize in Literature. I'm joined today by Radosław Bruska, a TV and science journalist. Welcome to the program. Welcome, and thank you for having me here. Great to have you. Um, whenever someone mentions uh, physics, chemistry, maths, that sort of stuff, my eyes glaze over, so um, I'm, I'm not an expert, but a very exciting crop of Nobel Prize winners. Um, can you just outline us what, what was it about them that caught your attention? Well, the AI, most definitely. Everyone's saying that the AI won this year's Nobel Prizes. When you look at technologies uh, which were awarded or the people who stand behind uh, those technologies, it's all about AI. So it's fascinating that more and more inventions are going to be made using AI or perhaps in the near future by AI. 
And what were these? What were these? This was in physics and chemistry, wasn't it? The, Pretty what, much, yeah. the kind of crossover. Yeah. Between the two. So, w what what is the f crossover in AI with physics and chemistry? Can you explain to to us what what it actually means in in, in concrete terms? Now your eyes will will start glazing. Now I tell you <laughs> that. First of all, uh, the the Nobel Prize in physics is for inventing the main mechanism behind AI. So um, if I'm also a programmer, I, I, I write programs. And the way you write programs is you write those very precise recipes which tell computers what to do step by step. And um, the, the, the input data must be very precise in order for those recipes to work in this very specific and precise pre-programmed way. And the scientists for many years have been thinking if we could um, use some kind of a distorted data uh, to recall something from computer's memory, to say whether what we input resembles anything in that memory. This is how our memory works. Yes. We might have... You're some, reinventing the human brain, perhaps. Pr uh, pretty much. Th this is what they did. Um, the Nobel Prize winners in, in physics, um, uh, Hopfield and Hinton, were actually researching the ways you can model human brain or the way human brain works inside of a computer. And this is how they came up with all, um, with, with the big range of algorithms, which we call now AI. And um, now you were asking, what are the, the, the crossings with chemistry? AI was used to model proteins. And uh, w when we think about proteins, we probably imagine those stickers on everything we eat. We go to a store, we read the label, and we've got yep. the contents of fats, sugars, and proteins. So proteins would be what? Something we eat, right? Well, in fact, proteins are what we are. Not who we are, but what we are. Our hair, this is proteins. Our skin, this is proteins. But our muscles or, or our uh, brain cells are also proteins. But the thing is that proteins have the recipes stored inside of our bodies in form of DNA. And this DNA is translated into a chain of amino acids. So those amino acids just are glued together, forming a chain. And what happens after that was always mind-boggling for, for all the scientists. They, they couldn't figure out how and why those chains, instead of staying straight, would fold and uh, take all those kinds of shapes. And first of all, they wanted to know the structure of existing proteins. So they would use many, many uh, different techniques. Most popular was X-ray, but it, it took months to get a structure of a single protein. And uh, what, what happened in chemistry field was they actually created an AI algorithm or a set of AI algorithms which could simulate the way those chains would change their, their shapes. And this blew up the, the whole biochemistry world and I can explain why. In, in yeah, sure. Uh, the, the the original kind of um, brief for the Nobel Prize was to, uh, as a contribution to humanity. We can see why th this is going to what what effect this is going to have on on humanity. What about the se the second place people? And there's only one or one team who wins the who wins the prize. What differentiates Hinton and uh, Hopfield from the the people who are also um, who are also running running in, in in the show. Yes, what's the deciding factor? Do you think it's the decision that the Nobel Committee makes, and uh, this is a decision made by people from uh, the Royal Academy of Sciences in, in uh, Sweden, and. Um, Sometimes I think it's a political decision. Sometimes it's uh, um, a decision made based on um, who we know, what we know. But it's really important. The, the impact of awarding the Nobel Prize is huge. And of course, in today's very complex world, we have many other uh, contests. We have many other yes. prizes. So Nobel Prize is not the only one. 
but it's definitely the most distinguished one. So what sure. does this, how does this uh, affect the, the prize winners? Do they get a huge boost in terms of their career, their, their research grants, all that sort of thing? Of course they do. Uh, they are immediately being recognized by the whole uh, community around the world. They get the, the price, which is about a million dollars. It's, uh, it's split between all the, uh, all the winners. But the most important thing is that they get this kind of recognition and wherever they go, they, they will be immediately uh, hired by any university uh, in the world will want to have them uh, on their uh, payroll. So uh, I think that's the most important thing. It's not the money because the money Today it's relatively small compared to yeah, the amount so millions of grants. Yeah, it seem million, to be a lot. It's, it? it's not a lot. It, it was a lot for Lech Wałęsa when we were still a communist country. A million dollars, yeah, that was a lot. That could uh, help to establish a big foundation or an institute. But in today's world, it's not a lot. But the recognition it gives you is is tremendous. You, you're going to blow blow my world up by chemistry. So yes, tell us about that. Going back to what it really means to have a protein that we understand, um, the many scientific or sci-fi movies were about injecting humans with small robots that would do things. Actually, it's not science fiction. It's it's what actually happens. Yes, yes. And those robots are proteins. So it's not only the thing we eat. This is what keeps us healthy. So some of the proteins are responsible for fighting uh, illnesses or diseases. Some of them are responsible for building parts of our body. Everything we are is proteins. But it was always very hard to predict what is the shape of the protein and uh, in effect, what, it's, uh, what is its uh, function, how it works, how it interacts with other chemicals. So the holy grail of, of biochemistry was to have a tool which would predict based on uh, the, the amino acids that consist of, uh, that build up the, the protein, to predict what it's gonna look like and what it's gonna do. And the Nobel Prize for Chemistry was awarded for creating this tool which very accurately predicts based on the sequence of amino acids what the target protein is gonna look like and what it's gonna do. And it was compared to those traditional methods that were like painstakingly uh, long and hard to, to conduct. And it, it, it gives you the same accuracy. So this is great. But not only that, one of the uh, Nobel Prize winners in chemistry actually did something that worked in reverse. You can actually design your proteins. You can say, I want to have a protein which will kill or neutralize a certain chemical in your body or eat plastic, whatever, and uh, I'm gonna do that. And the AI they're using is capable of constructing a protein that will be a nanorobot, which will actually do the thing you want. Uh, yes, I mean, you, I mean you, you talk very optimistically, very um, uh, evocatively about the, the positive aspects, but what could possibly go wrong in, in these? Well, anything, like a knife could be used to cut your salad and also to kill yes, someone, Yes, of right? course, yes. So, yeah. Uh, in both AI and in, in designing proteins that, were, that are non-existent in the real uh, world, you can always ask yourself whether it's safe, whether the proteins we are going to design will help us or harm us. So, uh, of course, there are many questions. I think that the technology, it, it's, right now, it's not gonna be that hard to design a protein, but to actually create an organism that will synthesize this protein uh, might be much hotter. So it's not going to be, uh, um, this technology is not going to be implemented at home in your garage. But it, yeah, it, it presents some threats. Yes, sure. uh, I agree that the knife can, can double-edged sword. Of course. Um, the, we were talking before you came on air about the economics uh, prize. It's, it's, a, it's a Nobel Prize, but it isn't a strict 
Nobel Prize. So you have these top three uh, fields of, of uh, research. Is that the way that the whole thing is structured? Do you, can you imagine that there's going to be a Nobel Prize in the future for AI or something? Which, is, is that going to change or are these physics, chemistry, medicine set in stone almost? Pretty much, because this is what Alfred Nobel wanted. Uh, when he died in his will, he set up a foundation which was responsible for awarding those four uh, prizes, including the Peace Nobel Prize, which is um, handed over to the winner uh, in Oslo in Norway. Uh, so we've got four Nobel Prizes, and the Nobel Prize in Economics is kind of a Nobel Prize, but not really. Uh, it was founded uh, almost half a century later by the Swedish National Bank to honor Alfred Nobel. So it's being uh, awarded at the same time and pretty much in the same place as all the other Nobel Prizes, but it's not a Nobel Prize per se. So what would you, what would you add to the list if you were the Swedish National Bank? Uh, this, uh, actually, I, I think that's enough. The, the, what we have is enough. Um, Alfred Nobel was a great entrepreneur. Uh, he um, developed many uh, discoveries, and most of them, the, the most important of them was, of course, the dynamite. And probably seeing that the knife has two sides in, in terms of dynamite, in the case of dynamite, which could be used to for mining, for example, but also for killing people, uh, he probably felt a little guilty, and this is why he set up this, uh, this technology and science, life science, Nobel Prize. There are many other prizes, and I think they will be more and more important. However, the, the discoveries within the life sciences uh, area will have the most impact on our lives. A uh, final question to you, uh, Radosov. Uh, we, we'll, we're going to move away from the sciences, move into the Nobel Prizes for peace and literature. Are these more controversial? There are, there's always seems to be a, a political debate about who deserves what, who doesn't deserve, who's too left-wing, who's too right-wing. Um, in my time, uh, Henry Kissinger getting, getting the... Um, a satirist said Henry Kissinger getting the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize was a sign that satire was dead. Um, th so th th that seems to be a very um, field which the sciences don't have. Yes, you're right. Uh, it might be very controversial, con controversial because um, much more people have an opinion on literature yeah. or politics. Uh, so there will be more debate and more controversy around that. Uh, in terms of science, it also brings up all those emotions, but in the scientific world, which we don't know that much, but believe me, scientists are also debating uh, hard over the verdicts of the committee. So uh, yeah, it's always going to be controversial. Yeah. Um, we won't mention Maria Curie Skłodowska. Yeah, we will now. <laughs> so, twice winner, physics and chemistry. And in her family, there were three other uh, Nobel prizes, which is crazy to have five Nobel prizes in a single family. Uh, so yes, uh, first uh, first Nobel prize she got with her husband, and that was for radioactivity. Um, then it was also for discovering uh, two elements, radium and polonium. Polonium, cold in the name of, of Poland, of course. And then she had her uh, daughter, uh, who had a Nobel Prize with her husband. Um, and that was for uh, further investigation, investigation into radioactivity. And there were other members of the family who also yes. got Nobel Prizes. This is yes, mind blowing. The, the high powered family, high achievers. Pretty much, pretty um, much. Radosov Bruska, thank you very much. Thank you. On and talking to us about the Nobel Prize. It was a pleasure, thank you. So that's all we have time for today. Keep watching us, uh, but do join us next time for How We Got Here.